So say for example, you had a gastric bypass and part of your small intestine was cut off or your small intestine was cut off. So basically you don't have that organ that transports this vitamin to your bloodstream. So taking this medication by mouth would be a waste of time for you and your provider because you're not going to be able to absorb that medication in your stomach which is where b12 is usually absorbed and transported into the body into the blood all right guys so welcome back to another video if you are new today my name is andy i am a family nurse practitioner and in the on this channel we discuss everything health healthy choices healthy living anything that has to do with good health and today we are going to be talking about a very very unique topic very different very unique in today's video we are going to be talking about vitamin b12 deficiency all right so what is vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is a water soluble vitamin that is found naturally in meat and animal products like eggs and milk okay so when the body lacks vitamin b12 it leads to anemia a type of anemia known as pernicious anemia which is also a type of anemia known as megaloblastic anemia in this anemia your body does not have enough red blood cells and what does red blood cells do for us red blood cells help us to carry oxygen you know through hemoglobin hematocrit it helps us to carry oxygen to the tissues and organs of the body so when you don't have enough red blood cells your body is your tissues and organs of your body is not getting enough oxygen so what are the things that would cause this deficiency in vitamin b12 one of the reason would be intrinsic factor so intrinsic factor is a protein secreted by the stomach that joins vitamin b12 in the stomach and moves it through the small intestine into the bloodstream so when you don't have this factor this very important protein your body is not able to move your body your stomach is not able to absorb vitamin b12 therefore it's not able to transport it to the bloodstream another reason why you would like this important vitamin is gastric bypass so if you've had gastric bypass in the past which is a removal of your small intestine which like i said is where your b12 is absorbed and transported into the body so if you've had that procedure then you're lacking um vitamin b12 you would be lacking vitamin b12 another and an, a reason why you would also lack intrinsic factor is um getting a stomach uh, having a stomach surgery done which is known as gastrectomy that is a part or all of your stomach has been removed um another reason is having a uh, something called chronic gastritis which is a um constant inflammation or almost all the time inflammation in your stomach so if you're having a lot of inflammation in your stomach it might destroy this special um protein in your stomach another reason would be autoimmune disease such as type 1 diabetes i have done a video on type 1 diabetes in this on this channel before and unfortunately that's one of the videos that was um, mistakenly deleted off of youtube if you haven't watched my video on how 30 of my videos was um deleted from youtube this year hmm i'm going to link it up here you can watch that the risk factor for b12 deficiency includes family history we've always talked about it on this um channel that um anytime there's a disease in a family there's always a possibility of another person in that family having the same disease so family history Crohn's disease, medication. There are some medications that you might take that would deplete vitamin B12 in your body. Strict vegan diet. So I love our vegans. So you guys know that if someone um, is vegan, that means they don't eat meat products. There are people that are vegan, but they will drink milk and they will eat eggs. There are people that are strict vegans, which means there's absolutely no animal products. So no milk, no drinking of milk no um eggs 
um, no meat. And unfortunately, in those people, there is a high risk of vitamin B12 deficiency. What are the symptoms of B12 deficiency? The symptoms include muscle weakness, so your muscles are weak, um, general body weakness, numbness and tingling sens um, tingling sensations, having trouble walking, um, nausea, shortness of breath, um, tender smooth and tender tongue also known as beefy tongue so the tongue is very smooth and looks beefy red that is a classic classic sign of b12 deficiency and also um heart rate fast heart rate is another symptom of b12 deficiency this um, deficiency is usually diagnosed by medical exams. So if you have those symptoms, your doctor will likely do a medical exam on you. And then they would order a blood test, um, including CBC or complete blood count. Um, so this basically looks at your hemat hemoglobin and hematocrit levels in your body. If it's low, then your doctor will likely order more tests known as anemia panel, which checks for your folate level your b12 and reticulocyte count um, so based on this your doctor will now determine what type of anemia you have because you, as you all know or maybe you don't but we do have different types of anemia we have the pernicious anemia we have anemia of chronic disease we have iron deficiency anemia so um all those things, uh, it, it's going to be discovered by getting an anemia panel and checking all these things, okay? Um, so treatments. The treatment depends on age and overall well-being of this person. How bad is the symptoms? What about the medical history? Allergies? Um preferences of medication because there are people that don't like injections and would take oral medication except for people that lack intrinsic factor then you would not be a candidate of oral medication because what did we say we say that interesting factor is a protein that is found in the stomach in your small intestine that transports vitamin b12 to your bloodstream so say for example you had a gastric bypass and part of your small intestine was cut off or your small intestine was cut off so basically you don't have that organ that transports this um vitamin to your bloodstream so Taking this medication by mouth would be a waste of time for you and your provider because you're not going to be able to absorb that medication in your stomach, which is where B12 is usually absorbed and transported into the body, into the bloodstream. So for such person, they would be a good candidate for injections. So those people will get vitamin B12 injections, which goes directly into your bloodstream. Um, so it's given intramuscularly and it goes straight into your blood bloodstream so that means it bypasses your stomach and goes straight to your bloodstream um so what are the food that are rich in b12 so the food rich in b12 which we've kind of mentioned includes milk meat poultry um shellfish and fortified cereals so this is why people that are strict vegans which the, who do, do not eat um any form of animal products um, would be really really at risk for this um, deficiency what are the key points or the take homes for today's video if you don't have healthy rbc's if you don't have healthy red blood cells then your body would lack the oxygen that your tissue and organs need okay so no healthy red blood cells not enough um, oxygen to the blood into the organ and tissues of the body um, it is one of the types of megaloblastic anemia okay it's it's also a bit of deficiency it's, it's also called pernicious anemia um, symptoms include weakness trouble walking numbness and tingling weight loss shortness of red fast heart rate tips that i have for you guys today for your PCP visit or your primary care provider visit. Number one, always know why you're going for an appointment. Always, always know the reason for your appointment. Two, write down your questions that you have before you get to your appointment. 
because like me i'm sure you guys big, uh, people can relate to this when you get to your doctor's appointment sometimes for some reason your questions just fly out of your head so everything that you wanted to talk about you don't remember so i would recommend you writing down the the important points something that you know you absolutely don't want to miss some things that you want to talk about make sure you write it down the questions that you have your symptoms write them down so you can dis discuss it with your pcp um if you're older you might want to go with someone that is able to remember things or is able to help you write down some things if a test is ordered please know why that test is ordered okay so if your doctor order a blood test ask them why they're ordering the blood test what is the blood test looking for what are they checking if you are given a new medication make sure that you know what that medication is treating ask for different ways different um ways for treatment so are there other options for treatment so so say injections versus oral medication if you're a candidate for oral medication why would you take oral medication versus injections let your doctor explain what is best for you um ask for a cvs also known as clinic uh, clinical visit summary so that summary would include your vitals so your blood pressure your heart rate for the day your weight your list of your medications your diagnosis both the new and old ones so it's basically a summary of your care plan of care so you can always be on top of your sure. health. make sure that you get a follow-up appointment always always especially if you're newly diagnosed with something you always always want to make sure that you get a follow-up appointment because if you're given medication for treatment there should be a follow-up to see how that medication is working for you if a blood test is ordered make sure you get the blood test done write down the date of your appointment and the time of your appointment if you're tech savvy or uh, like me i like to put things down on my phone make sure you enter it into your calendar on your phone if you're someone that likes to write and carry calendars um physical calendars make sure you enter it in your calendar so that you don't forget and you don't miss your appointment all right guys Thank you so much for joining me for this video, for watching this video. I just want to take this opportunity and tell you guys happy, happy new year. Because if you're watching this video, we are in 2022. Hey, so congratulations and happy, happy new year. I bless the Lord for you guys and thank God for the opportunity to have good life. I pray that you have joy and peace in your homes. May your home will be filled with laughter. May you be blessed in your going out and coming in. May you be successful in all that you do. Thank you so much for your support throughout this year. I've been on YouTube for six months now. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for everyone that has been watching my video from day one. May God bless you and may God prosper you in all that you do. Until next time, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Ciao. But now I shine with your reflection on me. I'm getting back up on my feet. That